Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Prophecies are being fulfilled today. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you for your glorious mercy. And it's working in our lives today. I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Now then, we've been talking about fulfilling prophecies. You want to fulfill everything that God has spoken into your life. You want to fulfill it. You don't want to live a life of regret. And I'll tell you something. To be successful in life is to fulfill everything that God has assigned for you to fulfill. And let me tell you this truth. God is more committed to fulfilling his word over your life than you are even committed to think about it. Yeah. Because sometimes we feel when we fulfill prophecy, we, we do something good to God. No. Yes, we act. The fulfillment of prophecy is, is it brings joy to God because it's causing his plan to be fulfilled. But you see, it's not about you. The fulfillment of prophecy is not about you. So sometimes you find people say, ah, I've done something wrong, but I don't think God will bring his word to pass again in my life. Because you have this mentality that because God has said this, I have to be sure I walk on eggshells. I have to be sure. No, sir. No. No. There are things too deep in life that you may never understand until the day God brings knowledge to you. There are things you read in scriptures and you want to ask yourself, how how did this, how? See? Because you, you, you can't line it up. See? How do you explain? David made a mistake. You know the story between David and Bathsheba? Yes. He took someone's wife. But hey, guess what? Have you ever studied the Bible to realize that Jesus Christ came from the, the, the two lineage of Jesus Christ, in other words, Mary's lineage and Joseph's lineage, those two lineage ended in the womb of Bathsheba. Yeah. Yeah. God spoke to David and said, look, I will see to it that you have a seed who will sit on the throne forever. God spoke. Okay. See, because David served the Lord, he made his mistakes. But his heart was one with the Lord. That's why I said, David is a man after my heart. Now, now you, see, you see how people think carnally. You know, I say, oh, God promised David that he will have his, a, a son who will be sitting on the throne as king forever. So he gave Solomon. Solomon and uh, Rehoboam. Oh, from Rehoboam, and then the kingdom was divided. But God still said, oh, you know what? I must maintain um, a seat for my son because of the covenant that I made with him. And then he, 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 that's why the, 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 the nation was divided. And he had Judah to rule. And Israel went their way. But hey, you don't realize that Jesus was also the seed of David. And Jesus is the one now who sits on that throne, judging the whole earth forever. Praise God. That was the fulfillment of God's prophecy. So David. Now, 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 this, this is the point I want to get. I want you to get. God spoke that word in David, in David yeah? Now, Jesus was born. And the two lineage of Jesus. Now, we know Joseph was not the real biological father to Jesus, but you see, he was married to Mary. See, at, at the time, of course, you know the story. He, he got married to Mary. So you want to say Joseph was the father of Jesus. And then Mary, Mary, through Mary's lineage, the seed of Jesus came. Now you trace the lineage, you can see that in the book of Genesis, Matthew, sorry, and in the book of Luke. You trace that lineage and you realize that they both ended in Bathsheba's womb. And then you say, what? This woman. 
there are things that are too deep for you to comprehend. See? Because you don't know. But God who knows all things knows how he orchestrates events to suit his purpose. But you see, when you put yourself in the place of righteousness to seek God with all your heart, even when you realize you have made a mistake, what do you do? You turn over to the Lord and you go to him just like David always did. See? Now, not God, I'm sorry, oh. Then in your heart, you're like, Lord, hey, you know, just forgive me this one. You know, I'm going to do it again. No, every true child of God doesn't dwell in iniquity. But there are times things happen that are too hard for you to even comprehend. There are times you are roped in certain temptations that you can't explain or understand. Don't destroy yourself. Don't kill yourself. Don't go and commit suicide because I have failed God. Don't sit down there and say, I have failed God. I don't think he will ever. I can't even ask him for forgiveness because I don't think he will ever. This matter, I don't think he will ever forgive me. No, come on. Who are you? Who are you? He is a forgiving God. The Bible says he loves to exercise loving kindness. Do you know what that word means? I, I remember the day the Lord opened my eyes to that word. That, that word exercise. <laughs> he said, let him that glory, glory in, in this, that he knows and understands me. That I am a God who loves to exercise. And then the Lord said, do you know what the word exercise means? And I began to look it up. And it means a stretching. See? A continuous doing to improve. All right. Really? You know, I, I looked at it and I, whoa. God keeps exercising loving kindness. I'm like, man, whoa. <laughs> you know, he, he keeps stretching it and stretching it. You know, I said, oh, today I ran um, one kilometer. Whoa, I've never done that before. Tomorrow, I'm going to see if I can do 1.5 kilometers. Next tomorrow, I'm going to say, the more you, you accomplish, the more you want to go further. The more you accomplish, the more you want to go further. The more God exercises loving kindness to this bad fellow. And it works. The more he wants to exercise to that worse fellow. And it will work. Then he goes on to exercise loving kindness to that worst fellow. Praise God. He loves to exercise it. That is him. No wonder Apostle Paul said, where sin abides, grace abounds, grace did much more. See, sin can never outrun grace. See, now we see, that doesn't mean you, you enjoy and you love iniquity and trust in the grace. Ah, the grace of God is there now to clean us up. No, 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 no. You see, I'll tell you this truth. Every child of God that loves God loves righteousness. That's why when you do wrong, oh, your whole senses comes alive. Like, what now? Nah, why? See? And part of the things that crosses your mind is not to go kill yourself. No, 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 no. God's children don't commit suicide. No, they don't. You know why? Because deep in their hearts, the love of God is found. Just like Peter, when Peter, Peter actually denied the Lord Jesus. Have you thought about it? He denied the Lord Jesus. They asked him, he swore at some point and John was standing right beside him. I, God forbid, I never know this man. I don't know him from Adam, praise God. But guess what? After all that, he went before the Lord and he wept. He said, Lord, what have I done? How? See, he didn't go kill himself like Judas. He was waiting to see what the Lord's going to say concerning him. <laughs> Judas couldn't wait. He went to hang himself and he died. See? So why? Because Judas never loved the Lord. Peter did. So how do you know Peter loved the Lord? Oh, you remember the garden when they came to arrest Jesus? Who brought out his sword to cut off someone's head? Peter. He did that to defend the one he loved. But Judas has always been stealing from the Lord. <laughs> he, he has always been stealing. So he, he saw Jesus as a money spinning machine. Keep preaching. I keep making the money. Praise God. That's how it was working for him. And, and so when the chips were down, there was no love inside of his heart. He went to hang himself. 
So you see, sometimes people, people claim, oh, I've done, I've, I've offended God. I can't handle it. I've offended God. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this whole church thing. I, I can't. And they actually leave. And they go live their lives anyhow they want to. They, 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 I, I used to be a choir master in my church. But see, eh, all those things I realized it was all, all fake. It was not real. See? No, 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 no. You were the one that was fake. Not the word of God. Not the church. It was you that was fake. And see, when you got to that point of temptation, you couldn't find the love of God in your heart. See? Because there was no prophecy for you to fulfill. But you see, if you're a child of God, even right now as you're listening to me, the word of the Lord will be coming back into your heart. And like, why did I leave? Oh, but, but God loved me. Why did I let man offend? See, there are many of us, no matter the offense of man, we are still stuck in. <laughs> Praise God. Why? Because we know him beyond man. You don't stop your knowledge of God with men. No matter how great your pastor is. No matter how wonderful and excellent he is. You don't stop your faith in him. You don't stop your faith there. See, your faith must be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you must always be looking out for him. Praise God. Always looking out for him. I remember years ago, you know, my, 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 my dad, my earthly dad spoke to me. And then he said, look, this is how you follow a man of God. He said, this is the man of God and this is you. And then he says, as you're looking at the man of God, always try to see the God, see man of God. Always try to see the God that is behind him. So you're looking this way, you're seeing him do stuff, and then you're wondering, how is God moving him to do this stuff? And then he now told me, he said, you know why? Because if for any reason, the man of God falls. You now only have a clearer view of the God you've been trying to look for since. But if your eyes is on him alone, as he is falling, so your eyes are going down also. And then you may go down with him. Many years ago, my dad shared that with me. And then at that time, it looked like, oh, this man is trying to slow me down from, you know, you know, cause, you know, very young then. But as I grew in the things of God, I began to experience people and the failures of men. I remember that word and I said, oh, that was true. Thank God I set my gaze on Jesus. This thing, there is no one who has ever disappointed me to the point that I doubted my faith in Jesus Christ. And no one can. Why? Because Jesus is too real for me. Praise God. And I'm about fulfilling everything that he has planned for me to fulfill. It doesn't matter the failures of men. Rather, we see ourselves as being there to help men stand. Praise God. So, so we help cover their failures. We help encourage them to stand. That's our role. Our role is not to condemn them. Say, hey, you are falling. Hey, come and see. No, no, no. Our role is to stand with them in, in the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And say, get up. You can do this. You can fulfill God's dream for your life. Praise God. Whoa. Listen. There are prophecies for you to fulfill. The more you pray. See, prayer is very important. The more you pray, the more God speaks to you. So the more you pray, the more prophecies you will carry. Both permanent prophecies, I was telling you something about area, about situational prophecies. And then permanent, there are permanent prophecies. Now those are prophecies that must come to pass. For example, what I was sharing with you in the book of Joel, those are things that must come to pass. What time? See, you don't fix time for them. Because God didn't fix time for them. See, how do you know God? Yeah, because they are dependent on the growth of the church. If the church will pay attention to growth, then God's prophecies will come to pass quickly. Praise God. But if we keep dragging, go up, go down, then we delay the fulfillment of God's prophecy that was spoken. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up already. Whoa. Father, we bless you today. I declare miracles are taking place in your lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.